Hello and welcome to another Nico video tutorial. So I am back and I am almost recovered. So uh, yep, everything should run fine. I hope you are healthy too and I hope you are doing well. And uh, yeah, sorry for the delay, but uh, it was really not possible for me to do something. I had to uh, to take some time for me and, and really recover because it's, it makes no sense when you just uh, be quiet for one or two days and then every start, everything starts from from beginning and you, you should know this. So, but now let's continue with tutorials and today we will this, we will make this what you see here, these colorful waves I named it. And yeah, so uh, I did this uh, with I, I tried some different ways to do this and the only way with, which really satisfied, satisfied me was with the postmorph. And so we will work with the postmorph today. Good. So with first so do let's without first I do let's start. I'm still in 24 you see I have 25 installed here but uh, I'm still not a huge fan of 25 and uh, so I work with S24 and the reason is also because uh, I started uh, many project with this version of cinema and I want to finish the project as well in this version so I don't want to change versions during a project this is not not a good idea at all I think so good let's start I start with making a spline and for this I use rectangle spline and I hide very five is more than enough here. Then I make a second spline here, I copy simply this one, make it a little higher so that I can see it, that's 15 and not as long so. And I want this spline inside this plane so about here so, that it, it doesn't have to be uh, exactly so this is no problem and drag it on this side here somewhere like here so that i just eyeball it so that this it is linked here it's, uh, it's uh, almost the same so but you can do this however you want it's no problem maybe you want to take other shapes or something it's a uh, Okay, then I need a spline mask and put both of them into the spline mask. You see that gives us not the desired result. So let's go to here. And I need a long C because we look from the front. This is a long C. Now we have what we want. And what's important here, I go to my rectangles and I don't want additive, I want known here. So good. Now I can make here current state to object on my spline mask. Current state to object, and we can hide this. And I have my nice spline here. Whoops. Which is nice. Okay. Now I want a rounding on these four points here. So I hit zero on my numpad on the keyboard. So I have a rectangle selection. Select these four points, right click and jump file. So, and now I click and drag somewhere in the viewport. You can do this however you want. So, let's say I make it five centimeter here. Okay. Good, nice. And now comes an important part here. I want to use Postmorph and I want to animate the Postmorph and everything. And this would all work here like this, but uh, not in a cloner. In a cloner we get artifacts. And I want to show you this uh, later on. So let's make here, uh, yeah, it's, it's a little work here what I show you, but uh, I want to show you the problems. First I make here and I make the correct way now. So. I have to go to my spline mask and set this from uh, everything is okay here but you see it's Bezier here and for my uh, morphing I don't need Bezier I would need an, uh, 
linear thing. But you cannot go only to linear here. See what we get. It doesn't matter how many steps you have here. So let's go to Bezier. The easiest thing is here again, click on the spline and current state to object. So now when I go to this spline, you see I'm here in linear adaptive. Now this will work. We get a lot of points here on the curve, you see. We wouldn't need that much, but uh, it's okay for now for us because we don't have points some else, somewhere else, so that's okay. This works. So let's make the correct way now. We need on this plan, so this is the spline mask incorrect. So now we need a pose morph here. So I go to the rigging deck and a pose morph. Bum, 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 bum. Here. And what I'm going to morph is points. Click on points. You see, it, uh, it's uh, already activated the pose zero. If not, just click on it and paste pose zero. And now I select all the points here. So this ones and I drag it on the other side here. So somewhere like here. Then I take these points here, drag them to the side. So something like that. Uh, more so. Now I take the upper half here and drag it up. Something like this. Okay, nice. And now I go here in my pose morph to animate and on the pose we should see an animation. You see that works perfect. <laughs> that would per work as well with the other spline here but not in the cloner then. As soon as we would use an effector in the cloner it would destroy everything. But not with this mask. So it's important to make to have it linear here. So okay now let's go and make a cloner. Go to my spline mask, hold my Alt key, click on the cloner. The grid array is okay, but I don't. I need to just the C direction, so I need here nothing. Here I want step of twenty, and let's give us twenty. So now we should have something like a quad here. This is nice. And okay. Let's animate the pose morph here. So in frame zero, I make a keyframe on zero percent. On frame hundred, see, go to hundred percent and make another keyframe. Okay, so this works, but this is not what we want because this is all together the same movement. This is not we want it. So it's a wavy movement here. Good. For this, we I do this with the step effector. So I select my cloner, go to the MoGraph effector, and say step effector. And what I want to effect here, you see it if you select before the cloner. If the cloner is active when you select the effector, the cloner will automatically be in here. If not, just drag it inside here. So the step effector should affect here only the time offset, nothing else. So nothing is activated, only the time offset. And here I give it the time offset of 50. And you see that change nothing. The problem is the step effector does not see the pose morph here. But the step effector can see a deformer. So what I do is I go to my spline mask here to the spline and under the spline mask I bring in a morph, a morph deformer. So go to the deformer. Here we have the morph deformer. Hold my shift key so the deformer becomes a child of the spline mask. So of the spline and you see. And this, the morph already have seen okay this post morph deck is here and Everything is okay. We need nothing else. And if we do now this animation, now you see it sees it. This is what we want. But not totally. So 
we have a time of set of uh, 50 here. Yeah? First, uh, what I want, I want, then I have everything set to a linear movement, so it's a linear curve. No, it's a linear, it's not a curve. <laughs> to, to linear, and here I want a curve, so an ease, ease. And I want that it goes back as well. So we need at least 200 frames to go back, plus the 50 frames offset here. So let's make 250 frames. Let's go to our pose mode here right click animation and show track and you will see here i have here a linear uh, and, but i want it an uh, ease ease here you see everything is selected but we can select it Jack. and i go to ease ease so now i get fan ease and i want that it oscillates once so I go to the post mouth tag here. Go to what should, should it do after the animation? It should oscillate only once. It, here it would oscillate forever, but we need it just once. Okay. See, it goes up and it goes down. Okay. Let's see what we get. Now we have a wonderful movement here. It's perfect. Okay, this works. And now I want to show you uh, what it what what it does when we do it with the incorrect spline when it's not a linear spline. So we take this one. Here we have Bessier, as you can see. I go to here. We can exchange it with this. First, we need the movement here so we have to make this post morph thing again but this goes i'll do this a little quicker now so post morph points go to the point mode okay here and zero that's okay and drag it to the side here take this guys here and drag it here so something like that okay so this is a, until now it look, everything should look fine. You see, it does the same like before. Make here a keyframe, so keyframe on zero, then I go to frame 100, keyframe 100%. Okay, now I drag this out here. And bring this in the cloner here. Make a mock a morph tag here again. So a morph. So and bring it. And you see the problem already. With this spline, we have this problem. So this wouldn't work. That was the reason that I made this in linear. And not in this year. So I can delete this again. Bring this inside here. This should be our correct animation. Yep. That's the correct one. Good. So this was the, the most uh, complicated thing here. <laughs> the other things are quite easy. So. What I do now is, I go to my cloner, uh, let's go to inside the cloner, and I make here an extrude. So I click here and I hold my Alt key, so I selected my uh, spline here, hold my Alt key and click on extrude. See, that looks correct and it is correct, but this is too, too far because this extrude is 100 and we are 20 uh, centimeter from each other so let's go to 20 you see it when you go to 19 okay 20 is exactly on the correct state here okay you see we could have made here less a little less uh points so when they're adaptive first before we uh before we 
uh, make a current state object, we could go from adaptive instead of 5 degrees to 10 degrees or 15 degrees, so we would have less here, but uh, it, it's okay for this animation here. So, but what I want to do is here, I want a barrel on the sides here, but first of all, I want to make this looking a little more interesting, so I go to my extrude here, caps, and I don't want, I want to load the preset here. Take this preset here, and it looks quite interesting. So let's go here to size of 2 maybe, and a height of minus 1 should be fine. And we have a nice thing here, and we can here put the barrel on it on the sides. So I go to my extrude here. I can put a barrel on the whole cloner. Yeah. Or on the extrude itself. Let's see. I bring the extrude here in a null object. So I select my extrude, put Alt G. And under the null object director, I bring in a barrel deformer. Which bevel our things here. And here offset of let's say 0.5. Two subdivisions should be okay here. You will feel that it, it works much slower now, but uh, we, we don't need it now, so, so it's just I activate the cloner uh, the, the, the bevel then by the file when I final render it. 0.7 maybe, yeah, that looks nicer. Okay, so I can disable the bevel for now. Now it can work normally. Save. And colorful ways here, but this should be the colorful waves on my temp drive. So let's go to temp. Colorful waves. tutorial you can already download so patrons can already download the octane version of this and uh, so I think I will here do it to the uh, uh, physical render version because as I said the octane version should be online already let's see if I don't lie here Yeah, it, here's the project file. It's, this is for Octane. Okay. So, uh, but now let's see what we have here. This should run nice. Yep. Looks great. Now let's. Let's texture this. I want to show you why I used this extrude here with these caps here. I really like this. Because now we can go to the extrude. And just for the, for instance, I make now an. Let's see, so this color here and drag it on the extrude. And I want this only not on the whole extrude, I want it only on the caps here. So yeah, only here on the front and maybe on the, but the other side I don't see. So, so yeah, here I would see it, but okay, that's no problem. And for this, I go to my tag here and hit C1. This is caps one. C1 in the selection. You see, I have it only here now. Same I can do for C2, so I control drag this tag to the side and say C2. That works as well. I'm not sure if you can say C1, Thomas C2, does this work? No, that does not work. 
SC1, SC2. No, okay, no, no problem. That's not really a, a big thing here. Okay, now we have this. And I can make a second material, of course. So this is the extrude. And this is caps. Okay. The extrude I make black here. So. And bring this at the front here. So, okay. Now we have this. But what I wanted to do is. Let's go back. I want the the clones when they are down on the floor, they should be darker, and a gradient should if if higher they are, so that we should have the dark ones, and it should then light more than less. So let's go back, and I want to do this with a gradient in the caps here. Let's go to here, so, okay. And go to my color. And da -da -da -da, texture gradient. And gradient. And you see that does not really work. So so uh, let's try with it with a 3D linear. This is X, Y, Z, so I don't want it in the X, I want it in the Y. And let's say the Y from zero to about 90 or so. Okay, invert the gradient. And you see, okay, that looks quite nice. But I want it something like that. It should be darker, but I want it here almost black. No cycle. Okay. I think I like this. But um, this would be nice, but I think this is too hard transition here. Simply go in fifty. Yeah, yeah, this is nice. Safe. Okay, I have everything here, and what I did now is, I simply made 
uh, instances of the cloner, but uh, the better thing what I think is uh, in my original file I baked an alembic of this whole thing here and then I simply did the alembic to one on this side one on this side and that's it so uh, when I make here go to my cloner and I bake as alembic this should work here so see bake is alembic where is my bake is alembic yeah you see that goes quite fast so, so this is not a big deal so okay it looks ugly now the alemb the alembic looks quite ugly here so uh -huh, it, it, it did everything. Okay, now that this is not what I want. Okay. Go back here. Cloner. And the Alembic will make a bad uh, geometry here on the on the caps, but that does not really matter because we don't see it. So uh, bring the cloner here in a connect object. No welding, so this weld is off, okay. Textures, yes. And I bake now the connect object. Bake a ceramic. I want just one object for this whole thing here. Okay, you see we have here the connect. Can now delete this. And we still should have our animation here, sir. You see that looks quite ugly, but we don't see this in the animation. So when I go N A and we'll see we don't have any artifacts here. So that works, but I forgot the bevel. So let's go back and activate the bevel. Looks much better with the bevel, of course. And yeah, and we did not have the uh, thing that. Let's see, it should work. Let's go to here. Dun, 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 dun. Uh -huh. Where is, why is, ah, yeah. Let's bring the thing on the connect object in here. Now it's okay, because the connect object overrode this whole thing here. And now we should have the textures on the Alembic as well. So let's activate the cloner. Oh, that looks nice. Oops. So go back here. And now again, we bake it as a lambic. And I again search for it. Bake as a lambic. <laughs> this could take a little longer because of the bevel now. So I will be back when it's done. Okay, that baked about two minutes here. And now we can disable here everything. So bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. You see, we have now on our Alembic, we have our textures and everything here. And this is in the trans almost in real time here. So this. Nice. And the simple thing I did now is I made here on the connect. Let's bring this all in. Okay, no, that's so fine. So I make an instance out of this connect. So 
update it. Move it um, to here, so did it. Something like that, move it down. Of course, we have to make this later on a little more uh, exact like me here. Or not, it does not matter, because you do not you do not really see it so and so maybe okay that's the wrong one <laughs> nice. But I want this no, this is not possible like this. Maybe I'll rotate it here ninety degrees, uh, hundred and eighty degrees. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, boop, boop, boop. And of course, as I said, if, if you want to be very exact here, so then bring this up to here, maybe, so that it starts with this here. Let's make another one here. Make him, cause I could uh, could uh, copy this instance as well, but uh, I want to start with this one, so I make here simply another instance. Rotate. Ninety degrees. No, this was just eighty. Ninety. Okay. Go up to here somewhere, bring it down, whoopsie. You see, I was, I was quite lazy here, so I was not really... But I really love this, uh, I really love, love, I like it, let's see. <laughs> yeah, to, to work with the lambic makes really fun. And of course, now you can say no this is not what I want rotate it it's 90 degrees would be better to see if it's possible to bring here uh, bup, bup, bup. axis center to execute oh, it is in the center Is it here in the center as well? Tool. Uh, mesh axis center. Execute. Uh, it is in the center. But you see, when I rotate it, it does not rotate it. Center is, uh, maybe I want to do it 
from here. This side here is uh, something like that. Okay. The fun thing is, I want to rotate this guy. What if I go to the instance here and tell coordinates the scale here the uh, x so bring it to minus one so now it comes with this one. How it looks in the original one. Yeah, that looks better. Yeah, not you can't you can't do it, but I think that looks not really good here because it looks more like a mirror here. So this is not what I want. But you see, you can mirror something like here in the scale as well. Let's take scale here, minus one. Let's see what we get. Ah, this is, this is in the inside then. This is not the best idea. <laughs> what do we get here? Minus one. Good for this. Yeah, let's pretend let's try it. Minus one. And bring it down here. Let's see what we get here. Let's stay with one here, but what was the beginning here? Beginning is the start. Date. Huh? What's now? Ah. <laughs> No, this is not. Are we now in Canon? Yeah, we are here again. Yeah, I think this is okay. <laughs> what could we do more? But let's bring it in a nice position here. So something like that. Uh, And it's so nice because you can simply do everything almost, as I said, almost uh, in real time. Uh, save this. And now I said I want to do this with the uh, physical render this time. So I can bring in my physical rig here, my rig ultimate. Delete the floor and the background. I make a dark background here, so something like that. 
and of course I will take different. Let's so save this. What do I have here in the render set? But then when I see the render settings, I go to low GI here for now and make it here in fixed. So let's see what we get. Okay. So, but I want now, of course, uh, let's bring this down to here. So, so, this is what we see at the end. And a different HDRI. So Shift F8. I want my HDRIs here. Where are my HDRIs here? Indoor. And bring here something like this. Ah, in 24, we have to do it over the asset browser. Because, uh, good, so let's go to the asset browser. Here I should have some. I mean, I, it's it's really it's crazy. I think I'm the only one who don't like the asset browser. I don't know why. I really prefer the content browser. Maybe it's my age. Okay. And I'm not sure if I don't want. Yeah, the pity here is we can in we have no bloom or something else of course in in physical render. We could try to to add some glow, but that, that never looks really nice. But let's see what we get. Effect glow and. I want that the only the objects glow, so I make here an object ID. So for this I need a compositing tag. The compositing tag should be in the render tags, yep, compositing tag. And I want only to give it an object buffer, buffer one, so enable. ID one, so now only the ID ones should glow. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, no, this is a little much, but it for a little bit, it's it's not so bad. Let's see, maybe size three. It's not so bad. I don't want to work here with the luminance material because I don't think that will work. But we can try it, of course. Let's go to here. But instead, copy this one and paste it in the luminance. Now, oh, come on. Copy. Paste. Multiply. And makes not really a difference, but of course we can now go up here. Yeah, we see more here in this is this is a difference here. When we see this. Yeah, I think I prefer the luminance channel, <laughs> but maybe not so much. Hundred fifty. Yeah, this this I like, and maybe with the glow. Well, why not? That is not so bad, I would say. And so I did this animation. Let's 
Zoom, do -doom, do -doom. That looks really nice. Okay, I hope you like this one. And today I try, maybe after lunch, I, I hope to, I try to find time to make another tutorial. And, but I cannot promise it because I don't, I, I, I have lunch by my parents and I don't know how long they want to talk and to blah, 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 and you know it. <laughs> and so, uh, have a wonderful Sunday, stay healthy, stay safe, and yeah, if you have questions, requests, complaints, please let me know, and I try to help you, of course, and uh, yeah, that's it so far, for now. And I am back soon, I promise. Okay, so have a wonderful day, have a nice day, have a great day. All the best here from Austria, Vienna. Und now, tschüss und baba.